Good afternoon, my name is Robert Shaw, and today we're going to explore the topic of client-side routing with Redux First Router. Um, this is the React stack we're going to talk about, and if you are familiar with it, then you'll be able to follow along comfortably. Otherwise, we'll do a quick and dirty overview. So React came on the scene in 2013, and they introduced the idea of thinking about our app in components. And then shortly thereafter, we had React Router, which provided us with navigational components and fit really nicely into the React ecosystem and gave us this really nice, lean, front-end architecture. Uh, in 2015, Redux came along, and before Redux came along, we had React developers uh, managing state throughout various areas of the application, um, usually with container components or what some people might refer to as smart components. And those components would take state data and pass that data down as props to child components. Um, Redux kind of uh, takes all of your state out of the uh, view layer and put it in one single location, promoting this idea of your app having a single source of truth. And if you notice, what I want to point out is that React Router, the first commit to GitHub versus the V1 release, is 18 months. And I just want to kind of point that out as that it's a um, complex thing when we talk about client-side routing. We'll come back to that. So if you had a regular React app that uses React Router and Redux, this is what the front-end architecture would look like. Uh, React Router is connected to the History API. Um, it gets changes from the URL and updates the view of your app. And Redux, if there's changes to the state of your application, those will be communicated to any components that are connected to the store and update the view. And what happens with that is a, there's a problem here. And some of you may be perceptive enough to notice it or you've run into these issues when you were creating your apps and running them. Um, basically, Redux is no longer the single source of truth when you have a uh, React router as part of your front-end architecture. Um, in fact, if you go to the Redux docs, they even pointed out here that Redux will be the source of truth for your data and React Router will be the source of truth for your URL. So definitely not the single source of truth if you're using React Router with your app. There are other problems and um, I won't have time to get into them, but update blocking is an issue and uh, there's no deep integration. And these kind of get at the idea that Redux doesn't know about the URL and the URL doesn't know about Redux. And so there's two separate sources of truth, as we mentioned. Um, and these are just a few of the libraries that have popped up trying to solve some of these issues. And the proposed solution we're going to talk about today is, of course, Redux First Router. So this graphic here kind of illustrates the um, philosophy that Redux First Router follows. So you have changes to the URL bar, which can dispatch actions and update state. And then you have actions that can be dispatched, which update the URL bar and then also update state. And this simplifies the mechanics of front-end routing when you have an architecture like this. Um, it transcends the philosophy of Redux First Router, transcends the uh, philosophy of thinking about your app in components. Uh, the philosophy for Redux first router is thinking about your app instead in states. And so what this kind of looks like, if you follow this philosophy, um, is something like this. Actually, this, we're going to do a quick example real quick. So you say you have a sidebar component, and this is the traditional approach to um, writing a reducer for that component if you are thinking about your app in components. So you have this component and there's two actions, uh, sidebars, uh, or two states of that component. And these actions describe that state. The sidebar is either open or closed. And the question I would have is, uh, what is the state of my application when my sidebar is open or closed? You can't really tell that from this reducer. And that's something that we can um, take advantage of when we shift our paradigm to thinking of our app in state. And so coming from this, thinking of your app in components to thinking of your app in states, you can refactor your reducer to look something like this. 
And what we have here is these are the different, these are action types, but they describe the state of your app instead of the state of your component. So it's very easy to look at it and say, when is my sidebar open? It's only true case is on the settings state of the application. Home list video, the sidebar is not going to render. And so at this point, if you're like me, when you have a paradigm shift, you probably feel right about like this right now. And I think we have time to go into a little bit more of a deeper dive. So we'll do a little demo. This is uh, the same type of setup you would have for your app if you um, were using React Redux and you create a, importing your store. The only difference here we're doing is we're uh, using the history object and plugging that in to configure our store. And we're going to go ahead and look at our uh, routes map. And this is where you define the state of your app. So each one of, this is the routes map, which is just an object. And each one of these keys are uh, actions that describe the state of your application. So we have home, list, video, play, login, and admin. And if you notice those values of the keys, uh, home is just simply, oops, excuse me, home is simply just a path. So um, you, can, you can simply just put a string which represents a path. And you can also do it where you actually um, describe what the path is. So you put path as another key for the the object of the state, and you put a uh, URL as a string, and then you can also place your thunks here. So this kind of, again, this simplifies the mechanics of fr front-end routing when you do it the Redux first router way. And we'll take a look at our store real quick. And this is how you configure your store to use Redux first router. Um, there we go. We just import connect routes from Redux first router. And with that, you will um, call that here when you're creating your um, reducer, middleware, and enhancer. So Redux Connect Routes will take in a history object, routes map, and some options. That will return you a reducer, which is your location reducer here. And you will have middleware and enhancer that get plugged in to the store just like you normally do. And we will demo this real quick. So if you can see this, I'll zoom in. This is, these are regular links like we're used to, except they're much more intelligent links because these are links from Redux first router, not React router. And so what these links will do, they will take a uh, two pr attribute and you can just describe the path of the URL just simply that way. Or if your URL has multiple um, uh, parts to it, you can just pass in an array, and each element of that array will be each part of that link of the URL. So this would be slash list slash React Redux, and this is the URL here. And if I go here to click, it should update the URL to slash list slash React Redux. And that's, there you can see. And then you can also just simply pass in an action in the to attribute and pass a payload if, you, if there is one, and it will dispatch that action. And so this would be list and this. So now the state of our app is, and we can go down here and look at the actions that were dispatched videos fetched, oh, excuse me, and then you can also see the state of the application here. I can't really zoom in much, sorry. <laughs> there we go. So this is describing the state of our application. This code sandbox is kind of hard to navigate. So yeah, this describes the state of our application, and we're on the list page. So um, that's a quick and dirty demo. And if you also notice, going back to the comparing the time of React Router from the first commit to GitHub to the V1 release, 
compared to the Redux first router, it's a much simpler API. And it, it's, again, it simplifies the mechanics of uh, client-side routing. And it makes things easier like SEO and code splitting and server-side rendering. Those all become a dream now with this simple front-end architecture. And in closing, for those of you who are devout React Router users, um, the React Router Redux package included React Router 4 may be all you need. However, uh, for those of you who truly embrace the idea of Redux being a single source of truth to your app, I highly encourage you to consider Redux First Router. Thank you.